The concept of space and space exploration can lead to many questions. Why isn't Pluto a planet? Can you hear anything in space? How many space stations are there? What happens when an astronaut farts in space? Well, you want the answers to these questions and so much more? I'm Mike with List25, and from spy satellites to Earth's name, here are 25 space facts you've always wanted to know. Twenty-five. How old is the sun? About 4.6 billion years. That's billion with a B. Mm. A billion is a thousand millions. Wow. Yeah. Twenty-four. Do astronauts really wear diapers? Yep. During liftoff, returning to Earth, and anything they do outside of their spaceship or space station. They aren't called diapers, though. They're called Maximum Absorbency Garment, or MAG. When I have a baby, that's what I'm gonna call the diapers. Mag? Mm-hmm. Nice. Hi, right, honey, I'm gonna go get some mags. Oh, no. What? That sounds dangerous. Oh, it kinda does. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. go with that. Yeah, I'm not gonna go with Don't that. Don't ask for that at the store. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 23. Is it true that in space, no one can hear you scream? Well, yeah. What we hear is sound waves, which are actually vibrations in the air. There's no air in space, so there's nothing to vibrate. Radio and light waves travel through space, but they don't need air to travel like sound waves do. Hmm. 22. When will Halley's Comet pass again? Halley's Comet will be visible from Earth again in 2061. Hmm. Interestingly, Mark Twain was born under Halley's Comet. Then he died the next time it came around. Twain was quoted as saying, Now here are these two unaccountable freaks. They came in together, they must go out together. Is Mark Twain going to be born again? Probably. Cool. I assume so. 21. Why space black? Well, because most of the universe is empty of anything, or cool. void of anything, including light. And it may be that there is light in the black spot you're looking at, we just can't pick it up with the human eye. Or the light waves are still hundreds of light years away. We can measure it in like Buzz Lightyear action figures. Those aren't... that's a lot of Buzz Lightyears. No, the Buzz Lightyears are about that big. No, they're not. Yes, they are. No, they're not. I had a Buzz Lightyear, they're just like that big. One of them. But if you want the actual toy from the movie, he's about that big. Really? He's that big? You think... Watch him. Watch Andy play with him. He's not this big. He fits in like the... In the in the Toy Story 3, they... No. I'm pretty sure... No, they're about that big. Holy crap! Yeah. He's tiny. They are. 20. <sighs> hmm. Why don't we really leave for Mars? Right now. Really? Yeah, let's go. Okay, neat. Alright, um, actually, no, no, no. Right now, it's looking like a planned 2030 mission to Mars is our most realistic timeline. But one of the major issues with getting humans to Mars is financial. While more people are demanding money for NASA from the government, looking at the success of private programs such as SpaceX, it's possible that the private sector, or a collaboration, may be the answer to getting us to Mars. Hmm. They're gonna go to Mars the same time Ted begins telling his kids how he met their mother. Yeah and they're not gonna age. 19. Are there really spy satellites in space? You betcha. Actually, Japan just launched one, the Radar 5, in March to keep an eye on North Korea. Thanks for keeping an eye out, Japan. Thanks. 18. The full moon isn't on the same date each month, so how long is a lunar cycle? 27.3 days. Boy, you got right to the point on that one. Yep, 0.3 to be exact. 17. What are the names of the planets in our solar system, and what do they mean? Well, except for Earth, all the planets in our solar system are named after gods and goddesses of Greek and Roman mythology. We're special. Pluto was the god of the underworld. Mercury, the messenger to the gods. Venus was the goddess of love and beauty. Uranus, the only planet named after a Greek god, was the god of the sky. Saturn was the Roman god of agriculture. Mars was the god of war. Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system, was named after the king of the gods. And Neptune was the god of the sea. Hmm. I'm laughing at Uranus. I know you. <laughs> uh, I'm 12. 16. So then how did Earth get its name since we're so freaking special apparently? We don't actually know. We do know that the word Earth is a derivative of English and German words meaning ground. Our planet is stunningly beautiful, mostly covered in water, and we name it Ground. Yay humans. Still kind of an honor, name the whole planet. Still, Ground. 
15. Is there really a mysterious planet X that we can't see in our solar system? Probably. NASA has found evidence for a Neptune-sized planet in an even larger orbit of the sun than Pluto, taking an estimated 10,000 years or more to make a complete orbit of the sun. Hmm. 14. Can you really get space madness? No. But mental health issues present on Earth would still be present in space. And if the stress of going to space was a trigger, astronauts could have a breakdown or episode in space. So, yes? NASA has done two separate studies on the mental health of astronauts, one on the ISS, another on the now defunct Mir space station, and the only interesting thing in the reports was some tension, which is basically what you would expect from anyone if they lived at work with their coworkers. There was no loss in overall mood or group cohesion. A test was run here on Earth that ended in 2016, simulating a year on Mars. The simulated astronauts couldn't leave their 1,200 foot habitat unless they had a spacesuit on. There was some tension and stress and some interpersonal issues. Like roommates in college, some will be lifelong friends and some will probably not even be Facebook friends. So there's no specific evidence for time spent in space causing space specific mental health issues. However, if you have them on Earth, you'll still have them once you leave Earth, in theory. 13. What happens when you fart in space? Oh, well, you just propel yourself like a rocket off into the distance. Seriously? No. Oh. Well, for one thing, it doesn't move because there's no gravity to pull heavier air anywhere, and there's no currents to blow it about. You just hang out there in your fart. Thankfully, spacesuits are made with modifications to filter such uh, gases, and astronauts have found their own ways to minimize sharing smells with the rest of the crew such as directing their personal wind towards lesser used parts of the ISS. 12. Why do stars seem to twinkle or wink in and out? Well, because their light has to pass through the various gases in our atmosphere. Think of it as light passing through water, which distorts the light and makes it sparkle. Same basic principle. 11. Could your blood really boil in space without a spacesuit on? Yes. Ugh. This has to do with how pressure affects the boiling point of liquids. The lower the pressure, the lower the boiling point, because it's easier for molecules to move around and start to turn from a liquid into a gas. It's why water boils more quickly in Colorado than it does in Key West. So the boiling point of blood could drop down to your natural body temperature in the vacuum of space. Not neat. No. 10. What temperature is space? That's a balmy 75 degrees. That's not true. I know. It actually varies. Some parts, like near stars for instance, are quite hot as in instantly vaporize you and your soul into ash hot. Then there are other parts in the deep dark and on the surface of some planets that face away from suns or are far away that are quite cold. It really depends on where you are. For reference, the ISS, without thermal controls, would be around 250 degrees Fahrenheit on the sun facing side and negative 250 degrees Fahrenheit on the dark side. Really? Vaporize my soul into ash? Well, if you had one. Wow. That was less than polite. <laughs> On the dark you'll, side. You'll be safe. Nine. How much junk have we left up there? Well, we humans aren't happy with just littering our own planet, so we've started littering outside the planet as well. Will occurs. There are currently over 500,000 pieces of space junk orbiting the Earth and being tracked, as they can cause damage to spacecraft. While some of this is little pieces of meteors that have gotten caught in orbit, most of it is stuff that we, humanity, put up and didn't bring back down. Well, that's just irresponsible. It really is. Guys, go get your space junk. We'll wait. Now. Yep. Space junk, go. Mm -hmm. How many pieces do you think were collected? Ten. Oh, we're almost there. Eight. Did we really send a gold record to aliens? Yes. Or at least we put it out there if there's anyone to pick it up. The furthest man-made object in space is Voyager 1, and it was launched in 1977 along with Voyager 2. They were to visit the outer planets in the solar system, and Voyager 1 has gone on its merry way into interstellar space. Both Voyagers carried a golden record with greetings, music, Louis Armstrong and some Peruvian panpipes, noises of the sea, and people talking, as well as images. 7. Does space really look like that galaxy print-off we see everywhere? Not, not really. Oh. At least not to the naked human eye. Sorry. 
Those super fantastical images are usually either processed in wavelengths of light that are normally invisible to the human eye, like infrared or ultraviolet, or they're color enhanced. That doesn't mean space isn't fantastical and beautiful, it just means that literally everything is photoshopped. I have every right to be disappointed. I know. Six. How many space stations are there? A billion. Oh. Currently there are two. The International Space Station, or ISS, and Tiangong-1, which belongs to China. While the ISS is always manned, the Tiangong-1 usually isn't. The ISS is shared by Russia, the US, Japan, Canada, and the European Space Agency. Right? Sure. Five. How far away is our closest star? You know, other than Sol, our sun. I know things too. 4.24 light years. Cool. Her name is Proxima Centauri. Neat. The best way to kind of visualize that distance is if you shrunk Sol and Proxima Centauri down to the size of grapefruits, or tape, because that's all I have right now, they'd still be around 2,500 miles from the east coast of the US to the west coast apart. Realistically, Sol alone is big enough that you could fit well over one million Earths inside of it. So, tape's all you had? I didn't have grapefruit. Couldn't get a grapefruit. No. Should've gotten a grapefruit. I should've gotten a grapefruit. Two of them, in fact. Yeah. And then I would've had given you one and I would've ran to California. Then we could've finished this later. What? Science! Four. Do any private entities like SpaceX even have plans to go to Mars? Yep, they do. In fact, Elon Musk, founder of SpaceX, Tesla, and PayPal, wants to set up a human colony on Mars between 2050 and 2100 of 1 million people. While that sounds kind of crazy, SpaceX is doing amazing things, and the timeline shows it's not a joke. It's a realistic goal. Would you go to Mars? No. I'd try it. I've seen The Martian. But you would be with a million no, other people. No, I've seen The Martian. All right. I'd go to Mars. I've seen the Martian. I'm not going to be alive in 2100. I might be if I try really hard. Three. Pluto has been bumped from planet to dwarf planet, so what's the difference between the two? Well, aside from that being kind of messed up, there's really only one difference, and that's if the celestial body in question has cleared the neighborhood around its orbit. A planet has cleared the area surrounding it. A dwarf planet has not. The other two requirements that apply to planets and dwarf planets are, one, that the planet in question is in orbit around a star, but not itself a satellite, and two, has sufficient mass to be round. Two. Yo. Hmm. Still got things to ask about Pluto. All right, what's up? Okay, so since Pluto is now a dwarf planet, are there other dwarf planets in our solar system? Oh yeah, there's actually about five in our solar system. Ceres, Pluto, Eris, Makemake, and Haumea. Pluto isn't even the biggest one. The largest dwarf planet in our solar system is Eris. She's about 27% bigger than Pluto. Bonus fact, Eris was the goddess of discord in Greek mythology. God, I hope Make Make has a moon moon. <laughs> hey, we got an extra fact for the price of 25. Yeah, we did. One. Is it possible for us to be invaded by aliens? No more Pluto questions? No, I got a ton of Pluto questions. All right. Yeah. Is it likely to happen? Not really. There's a few reasons for this. The huge distances between stars and galaxies in space, most of us can't really comprehend it, plus we have that pesky human problem. Why would a significantly advanced civilization spend years of time and resources to come here? We're pretty neat. We are pretty neat. Yeah. So what do we do now? Do we do one of those times where we just stand around until the thing comes up? So, what's your favorite space question? If you have any more, ask us in the comments below. We'll do our best to answer them. We got Google. <laughs> I use Bing. We know this. Hmm? Nothing. Enjoying our lists? Be sure to click that subscribe button in the top right corner so you don't miss out on new ones every Monday through Friday. Share them with your friends and help us consistently conciliate curiosity. And if you want even more lists, check out these two videos here or just head to our website at list25.com.